Welcome to Short Movie Recaps. In today's video, I am going to recap the hit suspense film, A Quiet Place 2. Don't forget, spoilers are revealed. The film begins before the events of the first film. The Abbott family, Lee, John Krasinski, Evelyn, Emily Blunt, Reagan, Millicent Simmons, and Bo, Dean Woodward, attend Marcus Abbott's, Noah Jupe, baseball game. During the game, a flaming object appears in the sky and crashes into the earth a short distance away. As people exit the park and attempt to drive away, the town is attacked by hostile alien creatures. The aliens possess armored skin, and extraordinary speed and strength. The blind aliens have hypersensitive hearing which allows them to locate and find the hiding town inhabitants. The Abbott family escapes the town and makes it back to their farm. The film then jumps to immediately following the events of the first film. Lee has sacrificed himself to save his children. However, Evelyn and Reagan have discovered that high-frequency audio feedback hurts the sensitive hearing aliens. Reagan creates a makeshift method of transmitting the noise from her cochlear implant hearing aid through a microphone and speaker, which allows Evelyn to fatally shoot the aliens while they are vulnerable. With Lee's death, Evelyn is left to take care of Reagan, Marcus, and Evelyn's newborn son. With their farmhouse destroyed, Evelyn leads her kids in search of other survivors. They bring along Reagan's kit to help fend off the aliens. Once they return to the nearby town, they accidentally set off a sound alarm and Marcus gets his right foot trapped in a bear trap. Marcus' screams of pain attract a creature. Reagan and Marcus use the speaker and shotgun to kill the creature and free Marcus. They run into a nearby abandoned steel foundry to get away from another alien. In the foundry they encounter Emmett, Killian Murphy, a friend of Lee's who takes them to his bunker under the foundry. Emmett's family is dead, and he now lives as a recluse. Emmett helps Evelyn and Reagan patch up Marcus who needs time to heal. Marcus and Reagan discover a radio station signal that continuously plays the song, Beyond the Sea. Reagan determines that the song is a clue meant to lead survivors to a nearby island. Reagan formulates a plan, where if she can reach the radio tower located there, she can transmit the hearing aid's high-frequency noise to others who can weaponize the signal against the creatures. Reagan tells her brother about her plan, but Marcus threatens to tell their mother to prevent Reagan from leaving. Nevertheless, Reagan sets out on her own for the island. When Evelyn discovers Reagan is gone, she begs Emmett to bring her back so she can stay and take care of her injured son and newborn baby. Emmett sets out to follow Reagan. He finds her and saves her from an alien attack, after she fails to kill an alien with a shotgun. Emmett tells her to return with him to the foundry. Reagan appeals to his sense of duty and persuades Emmett to help complete her mission to the island. Emmett reluctantly agrees. Meanwhile at the foundry, Evelyn leaves Marcus and her baby to gather medical supplies and additional oxygen tanks for the baby's soundproof crate. While she is gone, Marcus explores the foundry and discovers the body of Emmett's wife. Startled, he knocks over some objects, which draws the attention of a nearby alien. Marcus gets back into the bunker, but accidentally locks himself and the baby inside the airtight chamber, limiting the air supply. Emmett and Reagan arrive at the marina and begin looking for a boat. They are ambushed and attacked by a group of out-of-control humans, who attempt to kill Emmett and kidnap Reagan. Emmett deliberately creates noise to attract aliens and signs to Reagan to jump into the water. Two alien creatures arrive and begin slaughtering the raiding party. Two of the aliens climb on a boat that floats out into the harbor. One of the creatures falls into the water and drowns. Emmett realizes that the creatures cannot swim. Reagan acquires a small boat and the two reach the island where a small colony of survivors is living a relatively normal existence. The colony's leader, Jimin Hunsu, reveals that when the government discovered the creatures were unable to swim, the National Guard moved as many people as possible to the islands. Evelyn returns to the factory and realizes that there is an alien in the foundry. She distracts the alien and blows up an oxygen tank, but the explosion does not kill the alien. 
Evelyn frees her children and gives them much needed air. The three continue hiding inside the bunker as the alien continues to hunt for them. Back on the island, Emmett discovers the boat from the harbor that contained the alien has drifted to the island. He runs back to the colony to warn them, but the alien already has begun attacking the colonists. Emmett, Reagan, and the colony leader jump into a car and lead the creature away to the radio station. The alien kills the colony leader while Emmett and Reagan escape into the station, looking for the broadcast booth. The alien closes in on Reagan, and Emmett intervenes to stop it and is injured. Reagan transmits the high-frequency signal through the airwaves and the room speaker, which causes the alien great pain. Reagan impales its exposed head with a metal rod, killing the alien. Back at the foundry, the alien discovers the bunker and attempts to kill Evelyn and her children. Marcus hears the high-frequency signal over the radio and turns his speaker up. The alien is incapacitated, and Marcus backs the creature away from his mother and brother. He picks up a handgun and kills the alien with a shot to the head. Back on the island, Reagan leaves her hearing aid connected to the radio station's microphone, allowing anyone receiving the frequency to weaponize it. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe and don't forget to turn on notifications so you don't miss more short movie recaps.